Hi, welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. I'm your host, Rich Harrington, and this week it's part two of working with After Effects' Puppet Tool. If you watched last week, we took a photo of a bird and did the slightly laborious process of removing it from its background. Now, this does take a little bit of time, so if you're not the patient type, be sure to visit the website at photoshopforvideo.com, take a look in the blog area, and you'll see a post about this tutorial. You can go ahead and download the actual file and work with it, and I'll give it to you both ways. There is the layered file, it has all the layers you need, and the original file if you want to get the practice with masking and cloning that you ultimately need to do this tutorial. Now, we're going to jump into After Effects CS3, and if you don't have After Effects CS3, go to Adobe's website and download the fully functional 30-day tutorial so you can do this technique. I've launched After Effects and I need to go ahead and import my layered PSD file by choosing Import File and grab that PSD file. There it is, birdlayers.psd, and I'm going to import this as a composition. And I'll click Open. Now this brings it in as a layered file. And if I double click, you see it opens. Now this is a very large file at 3000 by 2000 pixels, so there's more than enough information here to use in a high definition video product. Let's go ahead and turn off the layers here, and you'll see we have our background layer, where we removed the bird and then cloned back in some of the background. Then we have our bird layer, and we have a branch that'll get laid back on top. Let's start with the bird layer here. It's selected, and what I want to do is animate this. Now, we're going to take advantage of the Puppet tool, and to do that, you need to pick the Puppet Pin tool. Now, the way the Puppet tool works is you essentially define pin points like an anchor point. For example, if my fingers were to bend, their pin points would be right here at the knuckles where they're bending. So I have to define the points where the skeleton will sort of build, and this will move around. So with the pin tool here, I'm going to go ahead and click, and I'm going to define a point here sort of near the neck of the bird. And the first time I click, it takes a little bit of time because it thinks, and it basically has to generate a mesh. Then I'll click down here near the tail, and I'll click here near the feet. Now what it's just done is generate a mesh for this object. And if we come here and click, you'll see as we drag that the puppet bends around those points. Let's go ahead and choose Undo. Now this works great, but it's going to seem intimidating until I let you in on a little secret. What you want to do is lower the quality of your preview window and then you could animate this in real time by simply dragging. Let's go ahead and drop our preview window down to quarter quality. And now what I'm going to do is hold down the command key. And you'll see when I mouse over a point here that I get a stopwatch. If I click and start to drag, this actually begins to record keyframes in real time. And you'll see here that it's actually recording keyframes. Now, the composition I have open is very, very long, so let's choose Undo for a second and check our settings. This one's five minutes, so that's a bit excessive. Let's go to our composition settings here and set this to a more manageable composition time. What I'm going to do is a duration of 15 seconds. And click OK. There we go. Hold down the Command key again, grab that puppet tool, and start to drag, and you'll see that the cursor is moving in real time. If I twiddle there, I could actually get the bird to do a little bit of motion. And it bends and it bobs, and you see that it's moving. Now, I want you to notice that the bottom down here, that the foot seemed to be bending. So if we watch that animation, and we'll go ahead and do a quick RAM preview, you'll see that too much motion is happening. Let's preview that at quarter quality and click. Now, as that puppet tool is moving around, you see that the top of the bird looks pretty realistic but its feet keep sliding up and down on the branch. And as we know, if the bird's foot's moving on the branch, chances are it's going to fall. So what we need to do is take advantage of a second part of the puppet tool, which allows us to starch areas that aren't supposed to move. Let's go ahead and stop here, and we'll just choose Undo to get rid of all those motions, and go up back to the Puppet Pin Tool area and grab the Puppet Starch Tool. And what this allows us to do is paint 
where we don't want motion to occur. Now, what I'm doing is adding some starch points down here where the bird is grabbing the branch. And we'll starch that so it doesn't move. We can go back here now to the puppet pin tool and I'll go ahead and hold down the command key, click and start to drag and notice now that the feet aren't moving as much. We got a little bit of motion on the bottom there so I need to starch a bit more. Choose undo, grab the puppet starch tool and add a couple more points down here so it doesn't move. There we go. If we want to, we can actually increase the amount slider quite a bit, and this will make it even easier when we click that it'll hold it more stationary. Put a few more along the bottom side, and here we go. Grab the puppet pin tool, hold down the command key, and now let's animate. There we go. Notice it seems more realistic. The bird's moving. We can have it bob up and down just a little bit, side to side, and the yellow outline is indicating what's happening. There we go. And let's have it settle. If I ran preview that, you'll see that it does exactly what we told it to do. Now the puppet tool here is very cool because you can create simulated motion. I've used this on all sorts of things to make things in photos look like they're bending in the wind like a tree to taking photos of hands and having them open and close. So there's lots of cool things and this tool really warrants you exploring it. Here we go. You see there's our nice motion. That's working out pretty nice. And what I would do to complete the shot is simply take the branch now and let's turn that layer on, go back to our puppet tool and we'll add some control points for the branch. And we'll simply do the same thing and have the branch move a little bit in the wind as if it were reacting to the movement of the bird. There you go. Let's do a quick preview. And there you have it. As the bird moves, the branch reacts a little bit as if it's being pushed. So keep in mind that we're working in a bigger than high definition video file here. And look how fast this is behaving, even on a laptop. So if you're going to work at standard definition video, this stuff just flies. And hopefully, this gives you some new ideas on how to explore the tight integration between Photoshop CS3 and After Effects CS3. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington be sure to check out our resource website at photoshopforvideo.com.